Hey, what's up Myth Guardians? Cool Cat here with another Myth Guard deck. Uh, today we are going to be looking at our first combo deck. Um, it's a pretty popular one up in the uh, higher gold Mithril and Champion ranks. Uh, we are looking at green and yellow Volition. Um, so basically the game plan is pretty simple. You control the board until you're able to drop one of your big guys and then Volition it two or three times to hit their face for 20, 30, 40, 50 damage in one turn all from hand. Uh, so you know the drill same as always we're going to look at the deck list we're going to hop into some replays with a short conclusion at the end all right so hopping into our first replay this is actually going to be almost a mirror match um just green yellow versus green yellow so we pretty much have all the time in the world and all the draw in the world in our opening hand so we are pretty much all but set up so we're pretty much just going to play our cards, draw more cards, um, you know, while they do the same thing, essentially. And so we'll get a turn one maze. They'll get, uh, they won't get anything at all. Actually, they'll go ahead and divination. And then we just have more and more draw. We just hit fall to draw another extra card, drop another maze, draw a card off of our maze, play a clay effigy, just keep that cycle going and really just push through our deck so that we can find our combo and win the game quicker than they can is essentially our goal. This matchup is all about who gets the combo first. And if we get the combo first, then we uh, pretty much win the game. If they get the combo first, then we lose the game. So we need to do everything we can to cycle as fast as we can. And we have the perfect starting hand to make that happen. So we're pretty much just playing our mazes, playing our effigies. And this will also help us to fill the boneyard as well for our boneyard abomination if we ever pull it. And they just keep on using their divination because they don't seem to have any playables in their hand. Um, but we have plenty of things that we can play here with our mazes, our effigies. We just pulled two Raid the Tombs. We got our Born Again to kill their maze so that they don't get too much value out of it. We're going to kill off our uh, two clay effigies just so that we have the board space because we're kind of running a little low right now on our board space with all of our mazes. Um, they get a pretty quick uh, Zimek off, drawing three cards, but, you know, that is perfectly fine because our board's completely stalled out and they can't really do too much. And we're just going to keep drawing cards, keep drawing cards, uh, burn that Wake the Bones. We don't have anything that we want to pull from our uh, Boneyard, play our Raid the Tombs, draw more cards. Uh, we'll go ahead and drop the uh, the Meso Libre. We don't really have too much use for it, and we were about to overdraw, and we didn't want to discard really anything in our hand. Um, they do have the Plague Maiden. That was kind of a uh, curveball, but that is perfectly fine because the Plague Maiden doesn't have anything to really protect it. We're going to go ahead and burn our Misanthropia because we're not too worried about anything that they do play. We'll, uh, we'll contest this Plague Maiden with the Juna, contest the other one with the Twin Blanc. So that we can get some overrun damage, they'll go ahead and play their Misanthropia. Which is perfectly fine, sending a bunch of stuff to the Boneyard is good for us. Uh, I guess it would also be good for them, but it's not really uh, too much of an issue. We'll go ahead and drop our Sapo and make a big boy that they really have to do something about. And it looks like they just top decked the perfect answer here in the Traitorous Murmur. Uh, they went ahead and stole our 1010. I thought about stealing it back right here, but there's really no reason to, and we can just chump block it all day. So we'll go ahead and stun it right now uh, and draw some more cards with the Raid the Tombs. Draw some more cards with the Wonder Drug because with uh, three of those swinging at our face, uh, that would be lethal for them, uh, which is why we were perfectly fine with getting it stunned in the meantime until we're able to, uh, you know, just keep cycling and form an answer out of the cards in our hand, which we can very easily do. Kill off that maze, drop the Harvester right in front to block that 1010, and we have a pretty easy kill on it with the uh, Harvester and the meso libre 
They're going to drop the beast over to the left, which sets us up pretty well for a uh, real good misanthropia. So we'll go ahead and play that now. Um, we'll play the burned copy in case we need to burn the other copy later on. Which we do this turn right now and we'll stun the beast so that it doesn't get any damage off on us at all. Go ahead and swing into the uh, the blood idol and they'll pop it over and volition it for some reason or another. I'm not too sure exactly what they're trying to do here. Um, oh, they were protecting it. Uh, there was no reason for them to protect that. It's going to die on their next turn anyways. Um, but, you know, you can't really can't really help them out there. Uh, but we will go ahead and steal there. It's a little uh, little karma throw down the bald mountain so our spells become cheaper we can recur our spells as well and they will play their own misanthropia their hand is looking very sparse so i'm not too worried about anything that they would have and they give us a really easy kill uh, so you drop the sable wing draw a couple cards buff up that sable wing easy kill on the volkov heavy so we'll take that trade all day uh, we'll go ahead and wake the bones, return the sapo back to our hand, also again buffing up our sable wing. They're going to drop the gamayan, um, but that's really nothing we have too much trouble with because we can just impel the sable wing right over, volition, volition, swing at their face, deal 10, deal 12, deal 14 damage, total of 36 damage all in one turn straight to their face it wasn't exactly from hand because we did have the sable wing on board but that just shows you the real power of the one turn kill combo that this deck has to offer all right so this next replay is going to be up against gone he's a uh, mithril level player um, and he is running a tricolor mid-range deck a uh, purple red orange deck so we are going to go ahead and start off pretty slow. We don't have any of our early drops. We don't have any of our early draw. Uh, we have a Raid the Tombs, but those require a couple of things to be in your graveyard first before you can use it. Um, but we do top deck into a turn two Kolobok. Uh, turn two Kolobok is not that great, especially against uh, more aggro, any red decks. They could easily just run a Trapezist into it for no value on our end. Lucky for us, they don't have a Trapezist in their hand, so we... Uh, get to live at least one turn to get one extra mana. We're going to go ahead and stall out this Steam Bun to give us some uh, some more board presence to stall out, stall them out so that they can't uh, move it over and kill our Kolobok. And they do drop the Shophorn Bull to cycle that Square Pike for another card similar to what we did with our red-orange aggro deck that I posted, um, cycling out the uh, eager recruits for actual cards. Uh, but we're going to drop our maze, detain the shop-worn bull so that we can save our maze for at least one draw, and our Kolobok looks to be getting at least um, two extra mana ramp for us. And they're going to keep cycling out their hand with the shop-worn bull. They're going to burn some cards, play some cards. They play the Ifrit, uh, which is going to damage them each time they draw a card so that's pretty neat for us um, getting their health a little lower so that our combo is that much easier to pull off uh, so we are going to go ahead and stun the ifrit so that they don't get any value out of it we're going to uh, draw another card with our maze um, and then drop another kolobok right there but i did uh, lock in my Kolobok so that I wasn't able to get another uh, draw off of it or another a uh, energy off of it is a misplay on my part so we're only going to get the one extra mana from it but they didn't even kill it off with the uh they use their standard action to move their um steam bun so that they didn't even kill it off and i ended up getting that extra anyway so that's pretty uh pretty good misplay by them letting us profit a little bit they play the Recruiter to contest our uh, Mesa Libre and the Bald Mountain slot so that we can't keep recurring our things, but they just go ahead and extract life in the end, uh, which is kind of painful for us because we were really looking to get some of those spells back, um, the Detained back mostly to help stall a little more, but we'll go ahead and drop our Harvester right there uh, because there's no way that they could kill it this turn unless they had another Extract Life, you know, which in which case we're fine with them using it on that because that will just draw us another card regardless. And we'll block it off, block off their Shop Worn Bull with our Born Again. 
so that they don't get any phase damage on us because they're starting to uh, look to chip us down a little bit more. Uh, they don't even swing into the harvester, which is kind of concerning. Makes me think that they're trying to set something up, maybe with a red carnival, but we'll go ahead and take the free trade and um, drop the Libre to stun the bull so that they can't keep cycling out their cards. And they do end up having the red carnival, which is exactly what I was uh, what they were setting up for. And they'll sacrifice the steam bun to buff up the racer. Use that racer to kill the, off the uh, Libre. Use the other racer to kill off the Harvester. So we have a pretty good uh, start here. Nine and hours, seven in there. So that'll be a pretty big Boneyard Abomination um, already. But we're just going to go ahead and draw some cards. We'll play the Bemini Falls with the Maze on top to heal up a little bit and play the Clay Effigy over to the side. We should have played the Maze a little to the left so that it could have drawn us at least one card, but we're more interested in uh, preserving our life total over drawing cards. The only cards we're really missing for the combo are the Volitions. So we're not too concerned with those. They do get a really big recruiter buff on the uh, Red Carnival, especially with the Steam Bun Sacrifice. Uh, so that's going to deal a lot of damage to us. It's looking pretty scary. So we're really going to have to block off those lanes, uh, which is fine with us because we have two Born Agains, making that pretty easy. We also top deck the Misanthropia to clear their board, kill their Ringmaster, because we really don't want to deal with that too much more. Uh, we'd burn one of the Born Agains because we really need an extra green gem in case we top deck one of our short stag or the sable wing zira we play the born again onto the bald mountain so that we can bring back our misanthropia just in case we do need that they go ahead and drop the trapezist all the way to the left and the abbot the wings of abaddon to the right to try to get more face damage and but we are going to uh, detain the uh, trapezist kind of shut that down a little bit and then just shot off the right side of the board with our twins to try to stop them from getting uh, anything in and try to s extend our resources as much as possible we bring back our misanthropia to try to uh you know convince them not to play anything too big or else you know they'll just end up losing it so they use their resupply caravan to kill off the twins, which is really good value for us. Um, you know, usually all of that damage would want to come face, but with the um, Volition top deck, we have exact lethal with our 17-17 Boneyard Abomination, dealing 17 damage straight from hand with the two damage from the Born Again is uh, exact lethal. We could have also recurred that Volition, Volition with our um, Bald Mountain, making that 32 damage to face from hand. So this combo deck does has some nutty, uh, nutty amounts of damage that it can deal straight to your face if you're not blocking off all lanes. Even if you are, with a couple of volitions, we can easily punch through anything that they are trying to block with and then just end up swinging face again. So um, yeah, that is pretty much how this deck plays out. Even against the more aggressive matchups, it can pull out some pretty easy wins. All right, so that is the deck. Uh, it's very, very powerful. Um, there was a tournament, actually, the biggest Mythgard tournament to date. A couple, or it was actually last weekend at the time of posting this video, um, the Halloween tournament. And this deck actually won that tournament out of all of the uh, participants. I think there were uh, 60 to 70 participants, and this deck was the one that was able to pull it off. They were running a couple of different cards than uh, what I chose to run here, uh, mainly a couple of epics or mythics that I don't quite have yet um, but I swapped them out um, for example the harvester was actually a Zalea the unclean um, which is a very strong control tool um, let's see the um, the uh, sable wing zira is actually an iku terso uh, which is a little stronger with overrun it's a six seven mana ten ten um, so you can get a couple of volitions in with that as well as long as it's on a bald mountain or you have a minion occupying the bald mountain um, and then let's see what else is there. There's a Bella Witch Queen um, thrown in there as well. Another great control tool. It's essentially a three turn stall a minion. And then there was a uh, Baba Yaga's Den, um, which is another great control tool. Two six um, that fully heals and gets defender uh, for a, a standard action. 
Um, you know, so there's a couple of different options, but essentially as long as you're able to stall the game and then have one giant turn volitioning a giant minion to the opponent's face for a lot of damage in one turn, that's going to run pretty much the same no matter what tools you use to make that happen. Um, you know, so we do have a couple of upgrade opportunities. Um, to uh, work into with this deck if you have these extra cards you know and if you're missing some there's some other replacements you could run as well uh, for example you could run the Indric Beast instead similar to what they were running in game one um, it's just a big uh, overrun guide um, you know but as long as you have the uh, the core package with a big minion two or three volitions on a bald mountain it's gonna work uh, you know it's just just a very strong combo uh, that you're able to pull off um, so that's the deck there um you know make sure you like if you like the deck um subscribe to my channel for more myth guard content and remember gg for matt